Hi, Mike. Um, as the head honcho of Jeep, <laughs> we're here in San Antonio at the press launch of the new Compass, and that car is being sold around the world, being built in four countries. How important is that to Jeep? How important is the new Compass? Oh, it's incredibly important for a number of reasons. I mean, you, you hit on the first reason. That segment is about 6.3, 6.4 million vehicles last year, 2016, forecasted to grow at 20%. So the distribution of that segment is truly global. You know, in North America, the home of Jeep, roughly 890,000. But if you look at the size of APAC, the size of Europe, very, very large there. So it's a big segment for us. Historically been a small player outside of NAFTA. So this vehicle is another opportunity to build our global sales. So I'm really excited about it. Now last time, when I first met you, we were in um, Wyoming, right? Jackson right. Hole. Yeah. And you asked me, uh, do you think that the Jeep should have a CD player? Yeah. Remember? <laughs> I you, do. You were wondering if, we, if, if it, Jeep should get rid of that. When, when we should take it out. Yeah, exactly. so, so, so my question is, what's the next piece of like tech that's going and hopefully it won't be the steering wheel? No. No, well, for Jeep, it's interesting. We've have, obviously, we have lots of debates about autonomous driving, and I keep reminding people that, you know, we already have driver assist in, in Jeep vehicles today. Um, not just the, the on-highway ones of lane keep assist and everything, but we've had the hill descent control for a while to help uh, people. Um, in terms of um, tech that's going, you know, I don't know. I just think there's going to be more and more tech added in. Um, if, you never know, it may be like uh, the old record players, they come back in 20 years time, so. Yeah, I'm a little scared, you know, uh, autonomous cars just terrify me because I love driving. Yeah. And I love driving off-road, and the more tech you add to a vehicle to make it more off-road worthy, the less fun it becomes. Do you guys talk about that? Is that something that, that's kind of discussed in the brand? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think for us, there's a couple of important principles. Um, obviously, what we want to make sure that we do is we provide the equipment for our off-road enthusiasts to be able to go and experience off-road and a lot of that is the connection not just to the vehicle but to the terrain that you're driving in. The, the degree of autonomy in that environment is basically going to be zero for the hardcore guys and girls, right? They don't want that at right. all. Um, but when you're driving to and from the trail, you still want to take advantage of the, that autonomous driving maybe on a highway or... Um, so there'll be a switch there? Absolutely, right. yeah, absolutely. And I think giving our, giving our customers choice is the most important thing, but we, we can never get away from what the brand is, and that's about adventure and experience. All right, now I'm going to ask you the questions those guys want to know, and that has to do with Wrangler. About two weeks ago, Sergio said that the Wrangler may roll out in uh, L.A. Is that where it's coming out? <laughs> well, I can absolutely tell you Wrangler is going to make its debut this year. Okay. Um, we haven't, find, to be honest, we haven't finalized the venue yet because if I look at the build schedule, it doesn't actually fall naturally on a show. Mm -hmm. um, but we are planning something very special in terms, we have a concept in mind of what we want to do with Wrangler. Um, it will definitely happen this year. The vehicle is um, on track, very excited. So, um, you know, you'll get an invite. All right, all right. And <laughs> any details you can share? People are talking about lightweight materials, solid front axle different powertrains, any of that you want to share with us? Well obviously we we get this opportunity to really update Wrangler and make sure that we take it well into the future. Now in terms of its capability, we've been very very clear all Wranglers need to have the capability and more that you know today so uh, everybody should not expect the capability to be diminished at all but lightweight materials are going to be important, different powertrains are going to be important as we go into the future. Turbocharging? I, I think, you know, absolutely, you know, fuel economy is, is a huge deal. We've got to make sure that we enhance, maintain Wrangler's capability but we make sure that we, we make a strong leap in terms of fuel economy. I think you're going to be very pleased with the package when you see it. It's a hard um, tight rope to walk, right, because you're trying to please the hardcore off-roaders who are Let's face it, those guys, you know, they have definite thoughts about what they want their Wrangler sure. to be. And you have to satisfy the aftermarket, which is huge for Wrangler. And then you, of course, also have the government and you have the safety issues. I mean, that's a lot of... There's a lot of different constituents, yeah. for yeah. sure. Um, and it's very, very important that we, uh, we stay true to what Wrangler has been and what it always will be. And that's the icon of our brand. It, it carries with it over 75 years of history now. It is DNA about, it's absolutely the DNA of the brand. And you know, ab above everything else, that's what we've, we've really focused on with this renewal. And uh, as I said, I'm, I'm very pleased with where it is. And I think uh, all of the Wrangler fans out there are gonna be happy. So when will we see the 707 horsepower Trackhawk? It's kind of fallen off the radar a little bit. It's been well on my radar for sure. <laughs> Good. You're gonna see it in New York. Okay. Right. I'm going to bring that to New York. All right, all right. Thank you very much. I think that. it's going to be a loud show.
All right, all right, <laughs> good. That's a, that's a huge uh, bit of news out there, guys. So let me ask you this, Mike. You've been with Jeep as a head of it through thick and thin, right? You were there in 2009 yeah, when sure. the economy went south, and you've taken it into one of the most successful brands. I mean, you sell every Wrangler that you guys can build. Absolutely, yeah. What's the future of the brand? Where, where, where are you guys going? Well, you know, we hit 1.4 million last year, another yeah. world record, over a million in North America. Never People never thought that would ever happen. And I think what we've been able to do is to continue to work on our vehicles and add to the range. And in fact, Compass is the last one really that we needed to renew from 2009. So next, you're gonna see us not just continue to update these vehicles, but develop the brand in other areas. I've talked about a Jeep pickup. It was in our history, I'm gonna bring it back. We've talked about Grand Wagoneer. In my mind, a very, very important nameplate for the brand. So in the next um, few years, you're gonna see these vehicles join our portfolio. All very, very true to Jeep. We've had history of these vehicles and we're going to expand that brand. Um, you also mentioned Compass, you know, we're building it uh, for plants around the world. So that globalization of our brand is important because it gives us protection that we didn't have, you know, in 2009 when really almost all of the vehicles we sold were in uh, North America. So we've worked very, very hard to make sure we expand our reach, expand what Jeep stands for because of our product portfolio, and we're gonna continue that. Yeah, you know, Sergio said when FCA bought the brand that that was one of the reasons he bought, right, Chrysler, was because it owned Jeep, which was one of the iconic brands. So it was Jeep, Alfa Romeo, and I think Ferrari were the three world brands. Sure. Is, yeah. that, is that difficult knowing that you're the guy who's kind of stewarding that, that brand? You know, I wouldn't have any other job in the world. I think I've got one of the, outside of your job, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty cool, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have any other job in the world. I mean, we're gonna to be, tomorrow we're gonna to be out on the trails, launching Compass. Um, we're gonna put it through its paces. We're gonna have fun. I mean, what could be uh, more exciting than that? Well, thank you very much. You've taken up of your time. Good to see I you look again. Look forward to seeing you. I won't be in New York, unfortunately, but my team will be there. We'll be in Moab. I know you got to be in New York, but man, Moab is more fun. Moab is more fun. Oh, yeah. You know, I wish I was sometimes in, in um, Moab, but this uh, track hawk's got a lot of attention. So we'll reveal that in New York and try and get myself out to Moab next year. All right, All right good. Thanks.